hi this is kishor and welcome to naresh it today we are going to discuss about class sequence means in last session we are discussing about class and structure differences okay in last session i have given class and structure differences today completely i am going to start class next uh, here one more important topic uh, we have to discuss in last session i said c++ is uh, an object oriented programming language okay and here one important point is c++ is not a pure object oriented programming language why because okay here we know that c is a function oriented programming language and we are discussing we have discussed that uh, c++ is object oriented programming language because of in c language program is collection of functions that's why c is a function oriented but here c++ program is collection of objects we have discussed that's why c++ is called uh, object oriented but here the problem is c++ is the extension of c language okay here c++ is the extension of c language which is also called superset of c language okay or extended version of c language or increment of c language that's why c++ supports all the features of c c++ supports all the features of c language that means c++ allows to execute a c program with or without any modifications in c++ environment that means in c++ the class is not mandatory with the help of functions also we can conduct c++ programming but here the point is along with those functions we are adding the classes and objects concept to the programming that's why here point is c++ supports function oriented concept and object oriented concept that's why c++ is not a pure object oriented programming language and what are the pure object oriented languages okay we are having such a if l java small talk okay now they are called uh, pure object oriented programming languages okay that's so why here java satir next small talk afil they are called what they are pure object oriented programming languages c++ is not a pure object oriented programming language next now how to create a class and what are the components of a class and later how to create an object from a class now first of all i am going to give you how to create a class with the syntax now i am going to start what is the class syntax first uh, class every class should have to start with every class should have to start with class keyword class is a keyword and it denotes we are going to start a class here next every class have to maintain a name but here the point is class name is not mandatory in c++ okay class name is nothing but the structure tag name in c language when compared with our c programming in c language every structure is having a tag name structure tag name which is optional and here also in c++ the class name is optional okay may be or may not now class and the next space tag name next here visibility label or access specifier next one we have to start private or public or protected now here private public protect what they are called means which are called access specifiers class access specifiers which are also called visibility labels and they are indicating 
the scope of the variables or functions means generally data members and member functions. Now, here the access specifier or visibility label should have to end with the colon symbol. Okay. Next, here data type, next uh, commonly we are calling variable and same data type variable semicolon. Next, here we can declare functions also that is why here return type later function and arguments. Next, same concept. Now, here brackets close semicolon. Here also C++ class, C++ in C++ class should be end with the semicolon. That is why every class should have to start with the class keyword and later we have to provide the tag name and later members. Actually, here they are called uh, members okay. and especially here variables they are called uh, data members and uh, here functions are called uh, member functions. Next, here what is access specifier or visibility label. Okay. Actually, in C++, the main concept is what data hiding. Actually, the data hiding is achieved with uh, this private declaration. Okay. C++ main concept is data hiding concept. <coughs> the major difference between C programming and C++ is what? C programming, it is public. That means, we can declare the variables at any place and we can access from anywhere. That is why C data is not protected because of it is public data. To avoid that problem, C++ is introduced with the data hiding feature with the concept of class. And in class, the main advantage is private declaration. When the data members are private, they can be accessed only with the member functions of same class. Here watch it, return type function. Actually, we are calling function, but in our C++, inside the class, they are called member functions. Now, the point is in a class, we are going to declare both the variables and functions together into a single unit called class, which is called the encapsulation, which is called encapsulation mechanism. That is why encapsulation is the process of defining different variables means data members and functions means member functions into a single unit called class it is called okay encapsulation next another concept is what data hiding hiding refers to be what okay here watch it variable variable and functions now the point is this data is available or this data is tied up with the only the member functions that are declared inside the class when they are declared as private that is why here the main point when the data is private they should be accessed with the member functions of same class. That means, they are not accessible from outside the class which is called data hiding. That is why only the class members means especially member functions can access the private data. It is called data hiding and this concept is achieved with uh, private. And here one more important topic private is optional. Okay. Here, when there is no access specifier or okay, access operator visibility label, then the default visibility label is always private. Next, another one public. The members that are declared using public can be accessed with member functions and outer functions also. Okay. Here, the public members are accessed with the member functions as well as outer members also means outer functions also. Okay. Okay. When the data is protected, what happens? This class can be accessible and it is a derived class. It is a immediately derived class can be accessible. That is why the protected members, okay. here protected members are accessed only with what? That class members and immediately derived class members. 
that means they are available minimum to two classes, but which is possible with only inheritance concept, which is possible only with the inheritance concept. That is why in inheritance what happened? We are creating one class from another class. That is why they are called derived and it is called base class, which are also called super and base derived classes. Now, here also same concept. Okay. Here the protected members are accessed with super classes means declared classes and immediately derived classes and further availability is depended on visibility label or inheritance mode. Next, now I am going to give one small example on this class. Next, one more thing here we have to remember. The tag name is optional I said, when it is optional means when the objects are defined here. Okay. Here in between the closed brackets and semicolon means closed curly brackets and semicolon when the object is defined. For example, here object is there. Now, when object is already defined, there is no need of a tag name or class name. Okay. Actually, tag name means here nothing but the class name. That is why whenever the objects are declared immediately followed by the class, then there is no need of a class name. Suppose these objects are not defined, then how to declare the objects? Then it is the syntax. First uh, class name space object 1, object 2 and so on semicolon object 1 comma object 2 and so semicolon. Now, the point is here all these are the objects which are derived from same class. Now, watch this here in object creation what we are doing? We are going to use the class name that is why here class name is compulsory that is why whenever you are going to define the class objects in other places of the program then you should have to go for class name otherwise class name is optional. Now, I am going to demonstrate one example. Now, I am going to start a class, just watch it. For example, class student. Now, generally student is having what kind of data? ID number. Every student is having ID number and every student is having a particular name. Suppose, here I am going to declare private. Okay. Now, I have declared private. Later, int id next uh, care name of 20 next here in this area public wide read student and wide show student next uh, brackets close semicolon now in this example stu is the class name stu is the class name Next, private and public which are called access specifiers or which are also called visibility labels. Okay. Access specifiers or which are also familiar with uh, visibility labels because of they are indicating, they are indicating the visibility of data inside the class or outside the class that is why they are called visibility levels. Just before we have discussed on point, when data is private, it is not visible outside the class. When data is public, it is visible outside the class. That is why here they are indicating the availability or visibility of data. That is why they are called access specifiers or visibility labels. Next, int id and name. Generally, we are calling variables, but when they are inside the class, they are called data members. Now, they are called data members. Next, to access this data, already we know that suppose now it is a private data. Private sh data should be accessed with the member functions of same class only because of it is not visible outside. That is why when a class is private, when total data members are private, okay, that class is useless class. Okay, that class is useless class. You should have to access with uh, either pointers like that. That is why it is mandatory to declare 
at least one member function in public area. Why? Because only the public members are visible outside and here we are going to declare this class objects uh, in main generally. That is why main means uh, it is out of the class. When data is private what happens? When all the members are private, they are not visible in a main function now, then we are not able to access this private data. That is why one function should have to maintain public, otherwise you have to declare friend functions, otherwise you have to declare the friend functions. That is why to avoid this problem, it is better to declare member function in public area. Now, these functions are called member functions. Okay. Now, it is the class construction, first a class, class name and data members, member functions and along with the access specifiers or visibility labels. Next, here what they are called member functions and everybody knows and here everybody knows that generally a function consists of three parts. One is what? Function declaration, one is function calling, another one is function definition. Here function declaration which is also called function prototype. Now, here it is the function declaration part and we need the function definition and function calling part. Now, how to define a function? In C++, we can define a function in two ways. One is inside the class, another one is outside the class. Okay? One is inside the class, another one is outside the class. When inside the class, what happens? And when it is outside class, what happens means, when it is defined inside, it will become inline member function. Remember this, here when a member function is defined inside the class, now that member function will become inline member function. Okay? Next, when it is outside, it is not a inline member function. When it is inline function, program performance is decreased and when it is outside, program performance not decreased. And when it is inside, we are not able to means uh, it is a rule, there is a rule. What is the rule means? We are not able to write complex statements because of uh, warnings are raised. That is why in C++, it is better to write the function outside the class. And what is the syntax to define a function outside the class? In next session, we are going to discuss how to define member functions. Okay. Actually, in this class, I have given how to create a class, how to define a class. Next, in next session, I am going to cover how to define member functions and how to define a object. Okay. Thank you for watching. Thank you.